Hi guys, Adas, how are you? I hope you are well. So I'm at the lake. I was at the lake yesterday with my kid, which is a Osador Australian Shepherd and Lab mix. And we're at the lake again today because that's just how we roll, baby. So, topic for today is, I left a narcissist. What do I do now? How do I recover? What do I, where do I begin? Okay. First of all, what you need to do is, key point, be patient with yourself because your emotions are going to be all over the map. Um, for me, quit. Quit doing that. He's not going to listen. He's hard-headed. Anyway, that's my dog digging right where I'm at. Anyway, um, be patient with yourself. Your emotions are going to be everywhere. All right? Um, for me personally, and that may vary from person to person, for me, the longest um, emotion to recover from is anger. Disgust, anger, the sense of betrayal. Um, you know, perpetrating one thing when they're nothing like that. So they're lying right out the gate. Okay? So yeah, it pisses you off, just to put it mildly. So... You got to recover from the anger and the disgust and the sense of betrayal. And that phase for me took the longest. The urge to want to strangle the person until their eyes popped out of their head. <laughs> Don't do it, guys. I know you're tempted. Don't do it. Um, but that lasts a long time. And I'm not a violent person. But I'm not a liar either. And I'm not a manipulator. So... When I get played like that, yes, I get very angry and I want to knock the shit out of you. So I wouldn't advise you to do that because you'll end up in jail. But yeah, you're going to feel that way for a while. And so I want you to be patient with yourself through those emotions because I'm listening to something. I'm in the woods, so I'm like, don't know if that's a bullfrog or it's some type of frog. Do y'all hear that? Oh my God, he's digging. He's digging to South America. Anyway, so I think that's a bullfrog. Anyway. So, yeah, you have to be patient with yourself through the, like I said, the anger lasted the longest with me. You're going to have times where you're not angry, you're sad, and you're, um, you're, in, you're crying, and other times you want to go back to strangling the person. So, I would say be, be um, patient with your emotions. They don't follow rhyme and reason. You're going to be triggered. You're going to be triggered by things that they said or things that they did or things that you see in everyday life is going to remind you of what that person said or did. So those are going to serve as triggers. Um, be patient with those too, through those. Okay. Because that's normal. You're not going out of your mind. That's normal to be triggered. Um, do y'all hear that? It's like, it's just a weird sound. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a frog. Anyway. <laughs> so your emotions are going to be up, all up and down like a EKG machine. So just, just roll with it. Vent to your friends. If your friends are exemplary friends, they won't get tired of hearing it because they know you have to keep rehashing it over and over and over, maybe in different language, but in different, in, in different ways. Because you just have to vent until you get your frustration out. And that's how women are. We have to kind of vent and get it out of our system. Um, there was a lot of, as you know, in the manipulation ship that I was in, in the summer, there was a lot of, um, oh, oh my God, the lies. The lies, the lies, the lies. 
um, this individual who's a snake also kicked my friend out of the meetup group. And he lied to him and said, well, because you're friends with her, meaning friends with me. That was a motherfucking lie. Pardon my French. That was a god dang lip, lip, lying, bullshit, and fucking crap and bullshit. Um, quit laughing. It's not funny. The real, he said, well, you're friends with her, so I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I don't have nothing against you, but, uh, blah, 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 blah. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with the fact that he was trying to fuck somebody that my friend was into. Let's just be raw about it. He was trying to stick his wang up in somebody else. And he wanted my friend out of the way so he could feel free to make a move on her. And the, it blew up in his face because she don't want his ass. So he lied and tricked and did all kinds of circus moves. And she don't want his ass anyway. You can't pay her to be with him because she's smarter than I am, apparently. Okay. Said he was in a motorcycle uh, club. No, he was not. If he was, he was only in it for a few minutes. My friend knows that gang, like the, uh, not gang, club. She knows those guys. And no, she never knew of him being affiliated with them at all. She, you know, he's just full of shit. And just because you have a fantasy in your head, that doesn't mean it's real. But in a narcissist's mind, the fantasy in their head is real. It's real. Because they don't live in reality anyway, right? So, anyway, the lies, the lies, the lies. You gonna kick my friend because you trying to get some pussy from somebody else? Y'all gonna, we're just gonna have raw language today. Really? She don't want your ugly ass anyway? I don't judge people by their looks. If you're beautiful on the inside, hey, you're beautiful on the outside. But if you're ugly on the outside and on the inside, you double ugly. And there ain't no cure for that. You're a rotting corpse on the inside of yourself. Anyway, move right along. So lots of dirty, underhanded shit. Lots of lies. He's affiliated with the military. I mean, not the military, but the mafia. And that's, that's a fucking bunch of bull. That's a fantasy in his head. So lots and lots of lies. Um, lots of, I know what you want for me and I know this is a passion of yours and because it's a passion, I'm not going to give it to you. Narcs are notorious for that too. So yeah, that's going to make you want to punch their face in so hard that their face goes into the back of their head. Um, again, I don't advocate for violence, but yes, you get mad enough to want to hurt them. They know that they're a poisonous person. Hi babe. They know that they're a poisonous person. They know they're a monster. They know that they're a thieving ass, lying ass, bitch bastard. They fucking know that. But that's the reason why they manipulate so hard. That's the reason why they perpetrate such a nice person. Because if they were to reveal who the hell they really were, people would run as fast as their legs could carry them. So back to you and recovery. So yes, you're going to go through all the emotions. You're going to remember all the lies one by one. They're going to come at you back and forth. You know, you're going to remember all of that. And you're going to get mad all over again. But give yourself time and give yourself a lot of patience because that's just a natural progression of healing. Some days you're going to do really well. Other days, not so much. Um, and that's okay too. So like some days you're going to make 10 steps forward and 15 steps back and then 17 steps forward and two steps back. So it, it's just going to be a kind of a dance in a way. And you have to be patient with yourself through that process. Do what you got to do. If you got to get a new place to live, you know, you got to live with someone temporarily till you get financially back on your feet. That will keep you distracted. But at night, you know, as they say, at the end of the day, you're going to be alone with your thoughts. And that's okay. Um, don't immerse yourself in illegal substances. Don't immerse yourself in alcohol because that's not, that's, obviously going down a dead end road and you're having enough problems as it is, right? You're trying to recover from what you've been through. So you don't want to start doing crazy things that are going to lead to bigger problems down the road, which, in, you know, inevitably causes you to go to rehab. We don't want to go down that road because that doesn't resolve the issue anyway. And I'm a firm believer in stress management needs to be taught in high school so that adults do not do escapism. I have to be high all the time. I have to be drunk all the time because I want to run away from my problems and that's not going to resolve anything. So that's another topic of another whatever. Um, 
I strongly believe that stress management should be taught in high school. And also courses on, this is what narcissistic uh, personality disorder is, and you're going to run across somebody, at least one person in your life who has it, if not more. This is how you deal with them. Um, they're not easy to deal with, but like I said, they're so manipulative and they play you so hard that, you know, they play you like a fiddle because they know if they came to you with who they really are, you would run, you know, Hey, I'm a lying ass, cheating ass, uh, bullshit artist who tells you everything you want to hear. And I don't deliver shit. Would you like to go out sometime? You know, you can't trust me as far as you can throw me. Want to go out? They know that's not going to work. So, so, you know, it's not going to work. So they have to put on this front of, I'm the nicest person in the whole world. I'm so calm. I'm so quiet. I never raise my voice. But I'm a conniving son of a bitch. And that part you don't know, but you'll find out later. <laughs> So be patient with yourself. I would strongly suggest if you were married and you have children or you weren't married and you have children, I would strongly suggest you get them some type of therapy, some type of some kind of therapy would be wonderful so that they don't learn that all adults are narcissistic. All adults cannot be trusted. My dad couldn't be trusted or my mom couldn't be trusted. If I can't trust my parents, I can't trust no damn body. Anger and resentment starts to be, um, be part of their behavior because children cannot express, Hey, I'm going through a lot right now. And I think I need to communicate about my problem. Kids can't do that. They don't know how adults don't even know how to do that. So, it would be good to get them some type of therapy, you know, contact your, your health insurance and see if there's um, some type of coverage for that or contact a community health uh, program and see if they have a sliding fee where they charge you according to what you make. So you don't charge, you know, you're not getting charged full price. There's got to be a way because you want, you've got to heal. So, you know, your kids need to heal, you know? I remember as a little kid, whenever they got divorced, and I think they got divorced when I was, I want to say I was a teenager. I didn't know he was a narcissist. They both are. But I didn't know he was a narcissist. And I used to think the world of him, the father. Uh, and I wanted to be around him more than anything in the world because he hid that. I never, I never saw that side of him. And if I did, I didn't notice because as a kid, you're kind of, um, you don't really notice things until you're older a lot of times when you're young. And so I feel somebody tickling my butt cheek. That's TMI. But uh, he's digging right where my butt's at. Can you not do that, please? You're tickling me and that don't feel great. That's a little weird. Hey, don't you bite at me. Ah, you will get knocked out. Anyway, boy, you don't know. So anyway, when I, you know, I guess I was supposed to be with him every other weekend or whatever, but I didn't know, I, you know, I'd be so eager to get away from her and her drama and her hatred and her bullshit. I was eager to be with him because he was, he was a lot calmer. Here's where the problem comes in. I'd have my suitcase packed and on the bed, ready to go. And quite often, he would tell her at the last minute, "Oh yeah, um, I, something came up. I can't, I can't pick the kids up." Now, something came up. It was called his pecker. So he was chasing women. All right. Um, I didn't know that at the time. I just know that I was extremely Dep no, don't spill your water. Don't spill the water. Drink it. Thank you. Spill it in your mouth. That's where you spill it. Anyway, um, I just was devastated. That hurt me for a long time. Even into my adulthood, that hurt me. Drink. You want the rest? Drink. No? Okay. 
that hurt. Even like I said, even into my adulthood, that hurt. And then I realized because he's addicted to women and sex, that always came first over spending time with his kids. Because you can't exactly bring somebody over your house and get laid or go to their house and get laid because you got kids. So, yeah, I just remember the immense emotional agony. He would do that at the last minute. Oh, man. It wasn't unheard of for him to do that. I don't want you to underestimate how the narcissistic parent you know, how deeply the impact of their behavior affects the kids. It's deep. It runs real deep, real deep. And the kids may not express it. They may not say anything. They may withdraw into their self. They may cry in their bedroom or something, but it hurts like hell. It hurts. And if they've been exposed to physical um, drama, you know, physical violence, verbal, and I was exposed to all of that. You know, he beat up the mother when she was pregnant with my brother. Knocked her against the wall. Her friend, who they went to nursing school together, she said that he pulled a gun on her before, too. He doesn't know that I know that. Um, narcissists love to point fingers at other people, and they love to talk about, well, this is what's wrong with you, and let me give you a legal pad filled to the brim with all the things that are wrong with you. And the reason they're doing that is because they, to the, you know, at the core of who they are, they're shame based, they're embarrassment. You know, they have embarrassment about who and what they are and they can't face that. That is, oh, uh, what's the word? The emotional pain of that is indescribable. They cannot, it almost probably feels like death to them. So instead of facing the awful thing that they are, they want to project. You're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. You're this, you're that. You know, she, he used to, you know how people, parents will um, brag on their kids and, you know, tell other people, well, yeah, my son plays basketball. My daughter's on the cheerleading squad. He never bragged on me because he's a narc. They don't do that. They don't brag on you. They don't give you compliments. And if they do, it's phony and, and a load of bullshit. Are you going to say hi to people? Come here. Hi. Furball. Come here. You going to say hi to folks? Say hi. I'm busy chewing on stuff I shouldn't be. Yay. Anyway. <laughs> um, he used to tell people. He was tickled to death to tell people. She's so filthy. Meaning me. The reason he said that is because I was a tomboy and I still am tomboy. I'm trudging in the woods today, for example. That's just how I do. I'm, I love nature. Um, and I'm a tomboy. So what do you do? You skip rocks. She's so dirty. Right. Rocks are not in a pristine, sterile environment. They're in the fucking dirt. I wanted y'all to hear that sound, but I don't think you could hear it. Maybe you did. I don't know. But I, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a frog. But um, I'm right near the, the um, lake. Right, like, less than a foot away from the, the edge. So, she's so dirty. I would climb trees, catch frogs. Like I said, they're not in a sterile environment. They're in the freaking woods. Now, did he tell you that I took showers that were so hot that my skin was red like a cooked lobster? No, he ain't going to tell you. No, he ain't trying to tell you all that. He's just too busy telling you how dirty I am. Well, you're a cheater. You pulled a gun on your wife. You beat her up when she was pregnant. I think you did a lot worse things than just playing in the dirt. I don't know. I'm just saying. Did I go there? Yes, I did. I didn't turn my back on my kids. I don't have kids, but I wouldn't turn my back on them because I'm trying to get laid. But I'm a bad person. Sit down. Sit down, boy. Sit down. So anyway. But, you know, um... We have a tendency, daughters have a tendency to think the world of our fathers. We think that his feet don't touch the ground. He's the best thing since sliced bread. And everywhere he went, I wanted to be. And then when you become an adult, you realize that not only was he not all that. Not, really? There's going to be worms because you're digging so much. Oh. 
right near me. You can't go in the woods and do it. No, you got to do it right where, where I'm sitting. Really, dude? For real? Sorry, guys. Anyway, um, yeah, I used to think the world of him until I realized that he's not only nothing of what I thought he was as an adult. I realized that he's a major screw up on every level there is. And a lot of narcs have the mentality that, yeah, that's my kid too, but you should have used birth control. Now, mind you, he didn't use birth control, and there are birth control for men. It's called a rubber. It's called a condom. It's called a party hat. Okay? You didn't use a party hat, but you blaming it on her? She doesn't have a penis, and she didn't get herself pregnant. Should you have, she have been more responsible? Yes, because she's going to be stuck with the kid, not you. You get to stick a baby in her and skip down the damn road. Okay? That's why I'm always emphasizing with women. Use birth control because he could just he could just skip away. They ain't my kid. She's crazy in a hoe. Bye. Uh, that's their notorious thing to do. Um, but yeah, don't don't underestimate the damage that that parent causes to the children because they may not express it. They may not express it, but believe me, it affects them. You know, it hurts them. It does. So. Once you get settled in your new place, if that's your story, if you're relocating, once you get settled, here come the emotions. Here comes, you know, you're spending time with yourself at night. Here comes all the thoughts. Be patient. If you need to cry, cry. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are cleansing tears. Those are survivor tears. You survived. If the person's violent, if you have to get an ex parte out on them, that's what you do. Ex parte is a like a um, restraining order. Oh, if the person is, hold on, if the person is um, prone to violence, then you may need to get an um, ex parte, okay? Um, and like I said, men or women can be prone to this type of nasty behavior. It's not gender, gender specific, even though some idiots who got blocked on my channel, I might add, Oh, you hate men, and you're always talking dirty about men. Idiot, you don't know nothing about my channel, huh? Well, you say something that's stupid, that tells me that you don't know jack shit about my channel. Because if you knew about my channel, you would know that I specifically said on numerous occasions that mental illness is not gender specific. Maybe you need to watch several more channels before you come to that conclusion. Um, if you need to get therapy, get therapy. If you need to get a life coach or a relationship coach, which I do both, um, contact me. If you don't want to contact me on YouTube and, and put your business out there in the comments in front of God and everybody, I have a Instagram. It's, it's um, lowercase tranquility, T-R-A-N-Q-U-I-L-I-T-Y underscore the, the um, lowercase Q, lowercase T. And you'll find me tranquility underscore Q-T. As in cutie, because look at me, I'm cute, duh. <laughs> anyway, I'm on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to, uh, whoa, oh crap. I thought that was a, don't laugh at me, don't laugh at me, y'all. Quit laughing, it's not funny. I thought that was a, um, what do you call them things? Pragmatist, honey, you, y'all was about to see me have a freaking heart attack. Anyway, so do what you, do what you have to do to keep your head on straight. Don't let somebody guilt you into, oh, you going to therapy, you losing your mind. You don't need to have no therapy. You need, need to be strong in who you are. You know, life is hard. You gonna have to suck that up. You ain't got to suck shit up. If something is messing with your head and you're having a hard time recovering from it, you don't go to therapy because you're crazy. You going to therapy to prevent from being crazy. And anybody who's trying to guilt you for that, that might not be somebody you want to associate with anymore because if somebody cares about you and your mental and emotional well-being, they will be supportive of you going. They'll be like, hey, I'll go with you. I'm not going to go in your session with you because that's private. But, <laughs> but um, you know, I'll sit in the lobby. I'll drive you there or we could go together and I'll sit in the lobby just to show support. I'm down. Anything that's going to help you feel better, I'm down. Don't let nobody, especially in certain communities, yes, I'm going to go there. In certain cultures, especially brown skin, black, Jamaican, 
uh, Dominican, Hispanic, whatever, they have a tendency to shame people for getting help, especially in the black community. There's a lot of, um, oh, you know, you, you know, life is hard. You just going to have to get a backbone. Abuse is abuse and abuse. The, um, pain of abuse can run deep into your soul. That's deep. The hell with somebody who's not supportive. And if you've got friends or family, especially family, and you know how they feel about it, you don't tell them you're going to therapy. You just go because that's none of their damn business. Especially if they're going to insult you for doing it. That's not somebody that's going to be supportive of your um, journey and your, your um, you know, your healing. So anybody who's not supportive, there's the door. Get out. I'm just saying. So you guys take care, tranquility underscore QT. If you ever um, need someone to talk to, I do coaching. And somebody asked me the other day, I got rid of him because he's an asshole. He did something wrong and then blamed me. Oh, well, you know, you did such a, excuse me? You sound like a freaking narc right now. People who are non-narcissistic take responsibility for what they've done. Oh, shit. What? People who are non-narcissistic take responsibility for what they do wrong. They don't blame the person. Well, you know, you did this and you did that. And I got a long ass list of all the things you did wrong ever since you were born. I'm not trying to hear that bullshit. If you did something wrong, be a man or woman and apologize. So anyway, like I said, if somebody can't be supportive or they want to be insulting because you're doing what you got to do for you, cut them loose and don't feel bad about it. Cut them loose. If somebody truly cares about you, they're going to say, hey, whatever you got to do, I'm here for you. That's what true love looks like. It's not a bunch of fluffy ass words with no action behind it. There's plenty of action behind it. And when the you know what hits the fan, that person's got your back. What? All right. He's he's acting straight up, fool. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little view i don't know how to flip this around on this phone i don't even know if it lets you do that so i'm gonna flip you around give you a view of the lake it's really pretty it's real peaceful and yes i do kayak out here and yes i do love it today would be a good day to do it i don't know if i could ever take my son because he's hyper and he might be scared and he might cry the whole time. So I don't know if that's something I want to have him get involved with at this age. Maybe when he's a little older, I don't know. But anyway, look how pretty that is. And how peaceful it is. And there's the monster. Y'all could probably see him. Chewing on a stick, his favorite thing. Other than driving me crazy because that's his next favorite thing. <laughs> so anyway. You guys take care. Have a good day. And I hope all is well. Take care.